Hello, viewers. My name is Dr. Adenike Eketunde, and this is Health Domain. On this show, we'll be talking about health, lifestyle, and general well being. Today, we'll be discussing drug abuse, and we have a special guest today. She is a doctor, a psychiatrist for over a decade, and he knows a lot about drug abuse. He's going to be enlightening us about drug abuse. Don't go anywhere. We're going on a very short break. We'll be right back. <music> I'm Dr. Tiffia Debbie, a consultant psychiatrist and psychologist. I currently serve as the medical director of Tranquil and Quest Nigeria, located in Lekki. Tranquil and Quest Nigeria is a branch of Tranquil and Quest New Jersey, USA. Concerning, we are uh, focused on mental health services and substance abuse addiction recovery. Uh, we provide a urine drug kits for homes so now we've gone beyond just doing the, the test kits for drug if you suspect that your child a loved one is using drugs way beyond just suspecting you can go ahead and confirm right there in your homes you can call any of the numbers um, for inquiries and to purchase the drug kits if you're interested for those who may be struggling with and maybe cried out for um, help um, help is available and for someone who has a loved one that needs help, help is also available. It is best it is best brought to the light. It is best addressed rather than just hoping and wishing. It is best to seek treatment and to seek treatment early. Welcome back. You're still watching El Domain, and we have a special guest joining us today, Dr. Edebi. Welcome to our show, Dr. Edebi. Thank you, Adem, Dr. Adenke. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself before we go into the topic drug abuse? Okay, I, I am a consultant psychiatrist and a psychologist. I currently serve as the medical director of Tranquil and Quest Nigeria. Tranquil and Quest Nigeria is a branch of uh, Tranquil and Quest US uh, based in New Jersey. Um, we are based in Lekki and I head the branch here in Nigeria. So you've been a psychiatrist for over a decade? Yes, I have. Can you tell us what is drug abuse? Why would you say someone is abusing drugs? What are the criteria to... Okay, there, there are things that we refer to as diagnostic criteria, but in defining drug mm -hmm. addiction or drug abuse, drug abuse is said to be a chronic um, relapsing brain disease that is characterized by compulsive use of drugs despite the um, consequence, the negative consequence. So you have somebody who compuls uh, uh, compulsively uses or seeks drugs, even though he knows that it is harmful to them. So in terms of diagnostic criteria, there are, there are seven things we look at. And once they are, you have three of these seven mm -hmm. symptoms, then you have become dependent on in the word we use in in, in, med in medical terms is dependence okay. but in the streets the word that is used is addicted you know so um someone who has a strong compulsion to use a strong desire you know you feel the need to use or just a, you know a desire that's one two someone who has tried to stop using before even stop maybe stop for a day or two one week one month three months and went back you know for whatever reason whatever the reason they went back but the fact is that they stopped and they went back it's called reinstatement that is another symptom then also there are, there are times there are certain kind of drugs that when you don't take them you feel certain kind of discomfort what is referred to as withdrawal symptoms so if somebody is experiencing some level of withdrawal like for example in alcohol they, they have the tremors they have the shakes you know, if you notice that if I don't take alcohol for a period of time, I begin to shake. That's that's for alcohol. That's a withdrawal. That's 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 another symptom that you look at. Then there's something we call tolerance, where over time, the, the those you used to take initially doesn't work for you anymore. So someone that used to take one stick of cigarettes takes one, but it's not it doesn't give him the high or the feeling that he wants, and it has to increase the 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 dose that or the dose that I used to take that used to give you a particular feeling no longer gives you that feeling. That's tolerance. Then that's another symptom. So when someone also has a situation where they continue to use despite knowledge of harm. So somebody knows that this is harmful. And it may even have caused problems. Maybe it has caused problems with their spouse, has caused problems in their workplace, it has caused whatever problems. And they know that the reason mm -hmm. I'm having this challenge, or maybe in their schoolwork, 
somebody is not going to class because taking drugs and all that. He knows that the problem that I have is because of drugs, but continues to use despite knowledge of harm. That, that's, again, is on that symptom. So, so those, those are, are just symptoms that we look out for and say once those things are there, and person is a drug person, addict yeah, or is abusing addicted, yeah. drug. How common is drug abuse in Nigeria? Well, it's it's really really common, and it's the the even though there are no clear statistics, but looking around, it's becoming more uh, prevalent for because of due to many reasons, it's becoming uh, more glaring. Because one of the one of the things that increases the risk of availability of drugs is or, or the, that increases risk of addiction is availability, and now it is out there and it's being sold to us on the TV, in what we watch, and in music videos and in adverts and all that. It's everywhere. Those were things that some years back they, it wouldn't be allowed, but today is literally like celebrated with a kind of lifestyle. So it's becoming more rampant. Now, what drugs are commonly abused? The most common, commonly abused drug is alcohol, followed by um, marijuana. Cannabis. Yeah, but nowadays we have quite a number of drugs. I mean, I, I know many times people we talk about tramadol yes, now, painkillers. Yes, talk about tramadol. Cocaine also is still commonly hmm. abused. Abused heroin, and there's also a particular medical um, drug that is also very commonly abused. That's pentazosin. It's also a painkiller. It's like it's like um, a trauma doll. It's it's seriously abused. I mean, among people who have uh, sickle cell disease because uh, they they suffer pains and sometimes they are placed on um, pentazosin. People with different kind of pain issues that are placed on pentazosin. Um, also, cough cough syrups and refno exactly. and all those ones they mix. Yes, yes, yes. R Rufi, as they call it, that's uh, refno. Uh, it's it's actually mm -hmm. called the rip. Uh, yes, yes. Drug. Yeah, so those are common drugs. Codeine, <laughs> really common. Why do people do drugs? What, what makes someone have, a, have an addictive tendency? What makes people get addicted to a particular type of drug? Why some people just take it and they don't? Well, people get do addicted. drugs for various reasons. Sometimes it's just to experiment. You know, I always say that your entry really doesn't matter to the addiction. How you enter, maybe you, you, you started. People sometimes take drugs to. to uh, go move away. Life generally, you are constantly moving towards moving away from pain or moving towards pleasure. That's how we are generally wired. You will do anything that will move you away from pain. So sometimes people take drugs to move them away from pain. And this pain is not only always physical pain. So we've talked about people that may start tramadol and start uh, pentazosin because they are in physical pain. There are also people who have emotional pain. Someone that's depressed, someone that's anxious can also sometimes take drugs because they want to move away from that pain. There's a particular situation I always that comes to mind. A particular lady who her husband used to abuse her. You know, she had a medical condition, physical pain. But she noticed that every time she took pentazosin for her physical pain, that the emotional pain that she was experiencing would also go. So she realized that this drug was helping me both with my mm. physical and my emotional pain. So sometimes people do it just to move away from pain. People do it for pleasure. I mean, if you've ever abused drugs or someone who has abused or you encounter, they tell you the experience is, is is out of this world. It gives you, I mean, some kind of drugs give you some kind of strength. Short term. Yes. Yes, short term, but it gives you strength. And you hear people say, oh, I can go for long term. I remember somebody saying to me that, oh, I could um, stay longer with sex. Mm. You know, so sometimes people do that. It gives you more energy, more confidence, and sometimes it's just out of peer pressure. Everybody's doing it. I'm in a party. Everybody's doing it. I don't want to look like the Jew person or the lay person, the layman in the midst. So I do it. So various reasons for why people talking about drugs. parties. Um, people take drugs in parties and everywhere in their homes and everything. Mm. We talk about intoxication and withdrawal symptoms. What mm. is the difference between intoxication and withdrawal? People don't really know the difference because they feel these are um, each drugs have certain signs and symptoms that is specific for different drugs. Can you just brief us about this? Symptoms, withdrawal symptoms, and intoxication. Now, intoxication just generally means just taking um, a quantity that will literally alter your mind and alter your behavior. That's when people... And intoxication can play out in different forms. I mean, sometimes people act out when intoxicated. I mean, really act out in really scary, weird 
pathways when intoxicated. Withdrawal, it's basically as a result of what type of drug you are taking. So for someone who takes, for example, who takes codeine, which is quite common, when they start experiencing withdrawal, something that's quite common is abdominal discomfort. So they just have... Cramps. When they stop. Yes, when they stop and when they maybe have not taken Think for a for long, long time. time. Yes, they start experiencing diarrhea and uh, running nose, uh, pain, just and just generally f a general feeling of being unwell, like somebody who has malaria. And it, that feeling does not go until you take the drug again. And I mean, if it's for alcohol, sometimes people with um, addiction, even codeine itself, codeine like alcohol can also cause seizures when, I mean, as part of its withdrawal effect. So um, there's something called delirium tremens that could occur in alcohol when people, you know, uh, stay away from alcohol. They can literally have a seizure and all that. So, I, I mean, different things, people from muscle aches to poor sleep, then very common irritability. There's an intense irritation it's just like everything just upsets you so you hear people say i have to take it to calm my nerves but what they don't understand is that at that point you're actually withdrawing mm -hmm. that's why you need to top up to kind of get yourself back so it's not the drug is not helping mm -hmm. you calm your so they already have symptoms of withdrawal yes, that yes, people don't even yes. know that's the early stage yes yes not necessarily the early stage that's a sign that you're already mm -hmm. had, had, yeah, addicted. Not yeah because oftentimes people say, oh, I'm not addicted. I can't control my own. But you mm. see, if you have all these things we're talking about, you are not, I always say that. You have to be on the streets. Yes. I, in fact, I like to say the new addict is not on the street, but in Wall yes. Street. I saying it's not the regular guy you see on, on the, the street. street. It's the person on Wall Street is functioning. There's something, called, there's something called functional addict. So person goes to work, seems to be doing well, seems to be living the life. But that doesn't take away that the person is an addict. What about cocaine and India M? Well, it's quite common also. Those are, those, those, interestingly, those two drugs belong to the class of drugs that, that are called stimulants. So they, 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 they give you the eu euphoric feeling, that, that exciting, very, very uh, exciting feeling. The interesting thing is that what is actually happening with drug use is that there's a change in brain chemistry. So it's not just what you see outside. There's something called dopamine in the brain that is the chemical that is released in the pleasure center. And when, when they do the, 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 uh, what, what we refer to as the functional MRI to look at like PET scans and all that, they show really raised, uh, glaring pictures of activity in the brain mm -hmm. and also really high level of dopamine when people are on drugs. So it, it takes you to uh, a whole definition of high. You, it's it's like a pleasure you cannot experience on a good day. And then it leads you to a place where you want to continuously experience that pleasure to the point where you start even putting away formally pleasurable activities. So you see someone that rather do drugs than stay with his family. We're going on a very short break. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. You're still watching El Domain and we're talking about drug abuse and the effect of drug abuse. Dr. Edebi, you're telling us the effect of cocaine and other stimulants in our body. Can you tell us the withdrawal symptoms these people can have on the long run? Okay. Um, um, I mean, there's a wide range of withdrawal effects. The thing is that when it comes to Indian hemp, actually, there is no uh, physical withdrawal symptoms. And so it gives a, a false appearance of I'm not an addict because with with Indian hemp you don't experience withdrawals, so you don't have any discomfort when you don't take it. That's why an Indian user can tell you I can go for a week or two or three without using, and therefore he thinks for that reason he's not an addict. But when it comes to cocaine, cocaine has a lot of withdrawal um, symptoms, some of, some of which includes running nose, a feeling as if things are crawling on your body. You know, so and then also the, it also comes with cocaine. Also, one of the major withdrawal symptoms that cocaine comes with is a just to see it takes you really high when you are on it, and when you are withdrawing from you from it, it takes you extremely low. low. So there's a tick sadness, and and interestingly, it's also short lived. The high the high part is short lived. So there's there's that because it takes you really low, and you feel depressed. You feel that like it takes you to a point where you feel like a superhuman. Then when it goes, you just feel like a nobody, a useless person, and you you don't want to feel that way. 
and, and you keep going so you, back. You tend to go back and go back to... What are the complications of drugs generally to the health you know, on the long term, apart from this physiological dependency? Yeah, um, they, 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 I would like to break them into their physical complications. I mean, drug abuse can lead to a lot of physical complications. I mean, a wide range. It could cause cancer. It could cause damage to various parts of the body, the liver. I mean, it could also cause tissue um, damage, for, so, for especially for those who inject themselves. Pentazosin in particular is seriously associated with ulcers and serious, severe ulcers, you know, all over. And if you have ulcers, then you can get infected. If you get infected, you can have sepsis. So there are a wide range of physical um, complications that could arise. And well, the ultimate thing that can arise in physical is death. I mean, you can OD, you can overdose on drugs and mm -hmm. that leads to death. So, I mean, a full cardiovascular system just shutting down, you know, it, it could depress the respiratory system. So there are many things that you can do physically. Psychologically also, it takes away from you. I mean, it takes away um, psychosocially, if I use that broad word, it takes away from you. It takes, it takes friends from you. It takes people from you. It takes respect from you. It starts out by giving you respect. There's a particular story that comes to mind, a particular uh, sprinter. She was well-renowned, don't know call her name, but Olympic champion and all that. And, you know, did a lot of, in her peak days, she was top until they found that she was using drugs. Okay. And it's literally just stripped everything. So it just takes away everything. It starts out by giving you, yeah. yes, it gives you a lot. I mean, you've had people lose their Doctors who have been addicts have lost their licenses. They are this thing. Lose your family. You lose people. Someone said to one uh, in a session we we're having recently. Someone said that I have had to leave certain friends because I would choose drug over my friends. Not because he wants to, but they just find themselves, you know, pushing that way. You know, so it takes it takes it takes any drug addict will tell you that yes, I get a lot of pleasure from it. But it it has also robbed me mm. of a lot of things. Mm. So how do you have people that are drug, drug addicts that are abusing drugs? Well, uh, there are various forms of treatment. But if I would just talk broadly about the types of treatments available, there's something called the medically assisted treatment, where sometimes to deal with um, detoxification from the drugs, you know, somebody's withdrawing, is fitting, is shaking, and all that. You need to give medications to address mm. all that. But after that, they are they are taken through an intensive program. You know, sometimes we have something called the therapeutic community where they stay there for months, where they are, they learn new life skills. Because addiction is like the treatment in that addiction treatment is aimed at changing your lifestyle. So it's like learning new things, and spirituality actually plays a big part in its treatment. Actually, for parents, viewers, watching us, how do you prevent your children or your loved ones from becoming an addict maybe they started drinking taking drugs and you notice that ah, this person is taking drugs how do you actually prevent advice how do you stop people from becoming an addict well number one it's it, that's a very broad question but i mean if we look at it generally mm -hmm. first of all education is very important i mean if people are better informed you know it's like going into a world a, so for someone who's experimenting it's going into a world that it doesn't know the consequence because you see many times people make decisions without realizing the consequence then the second thing i would say is early intervention it, it, don't and early intervention is important for any form of disease if someone has a cut he goes to the hospital early it, the treatment is likely to work better for parents out there that have been in the position of catching their children in the act you know what is the advice you're going to give them rather than crying and begging the children? Because I have a personal experience with a friend that told me that his mom caught him and started crying. I was like, mommy, I'm so sorry. I'm going to stop. But he got worse. Just advising someone to stop. It's not enough. Because I'm not, it's not the function of I choose to take mm -hmm. anymore. It's that I am, I am compelled to use the drug. That's why, like you just said, I've told my mom I stopped. And truly, in his heart of hearts, I'm sure that person he really wanted some, yes. but he feels a compulsion to use. So, therefore, it now leads to the third point that you need to take action. And action has to be 
sometimes the practical action, there's something we do in my organization. There's something called the drug kits, UDT kits that we're now making. Before it was only available in the hospitals, but now we're making it available to public people. So we're telling parents that go beyond suspecting, <laughs> confirm. You, you can take you, you can, you can buy the kits and in your house, stop okay. suspecting the child. Just confirm. You, the child cannot argue with this thing. So if you confirm and you, maybe you tell the person stop, the person say I've stopped. Then you call him one day again. So you bring your urine. Mm -hmm. Are you tested and it confirms? Why right time you confirm two, three times? Please take the person for treatment. Thank you so much, Dr. Edebi. We are going on a very short break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Health Domain. And on this segment, we'll be debunking medical myths in drug abuse. Dr. Edebi, we're going to the myths about drug addiction. The first one is addiction is not voluntary. Okay. Um, that's true and false. It starts out being voluntary. I mean, nobody forces you. In the big world, the average person, yes, there have been people who have been, as children, have been abused. People in drug torn. Uh, drug war areas, there are children that have been forced and all that, but most people start out voluntary, but it progresses to becoming compulsive. Okay, it is spiritual. Like, before you can completely cure or, let me say, receive good treatment, you have to go spiritual. That is not completely true. Research, I mean, there are a lot of treatment centers that don't necessarily use um, spiritual treatments. You know, and they get very good results. There are places who use spiritual treatments and still have cases that relapse. So, and there has been no research to show that those who use spiritual treatments are better off than those. But like I said earlier, many people, many treatment facilities, many, even many all over the world. Yes, there's something that is commonly used. It's called the 12 step program. The 12 step program is actually built on spirituality. Because the first step of the 12-step program says we have come to a, to a realization that we are powerless against this drug mm -hmm. and we need God to help us or we need a higher power. So the whole 12-step is about spirituality and that program is used in mm -hmm. a lot of facilities all over the world. So do you believe in demons taking over these people to do some act? Well, I, I would pass. Um, I would pass on that question. And the simple reason is not because I believe or don't believe. If I would say my own personal opinion, I would say that as much as I believe that drug addiction is Medical. as spiritual as much as malaria is spiritual. So if you say malaria is spiritual, sure. then addiction is equally spiritual. Okay, well, uh, we have to want treatment to be effective. Drug addicts, they have to be willing to take this treatment before it can be effective is that, a method? that that is not completely correct what i'm someone does not necessarily have to come into treatment willfully but at some point during treatment has to desire to be well so the initial uh, entry point into treatment may not be willful for example it can be that the school Re request that you have to go to a, mm -hmm. through a uh, rehab program. It can be the court request. It can be that the family says, mm -hmm. we're not going to give you any inheritance mm -hmm. except you go through this thing. We're not going to give you X, Y, Z except you go through that. So the person is not going because they are willing, but at some point in treatment, the person has to become willing, motivated. That's the word we use. Another one, men are more prone to addiction than women. I don't think that's it. Uh, there's no... There's no um, proof to that but socially um, most of the drug of abuse are more socially acceptable for the male uh, gender so it is more socially acceptable to drink alcohol it's more socially acceptable to smoke cigarettes it's more socially the acceptable to take indian hemp you can imagine a female taking indian hemp there's a way that society will look at the person so because they're the population that uses um, um, drugs is more among the male because of mm -hmm. social factors. I think um, that's why it looks as if men are more prone. Addiction is related to HIV and AIDS. One would say that is partly correct because the some addictive uh, addiction itself depends on drug abuse. Because when you say addiction, you are, that's a broad statement for different drugs. But there are drugs 
like heroin, for example, heroin users tend to share needles. You know, the use of the use, the compulsion to take drugs can also lead you to risky behaviors. So it can it can make somebody have sex without protection, can make someone have sex for the drugs. So the risky behaviors generally are increased. Dr behaviors that that increase your risk. So one would say that it increases the risk of becoming infected. So therefore, research has shown that the population of, of HIV among drug abusers is higher than the general population. Yeah. Talking about HIV AIDS and drug addiction, what is the relationship between HIV AIDS, sexual transmitted disease, and um, same-sex marriage or relationship that is gay? What is medically, a medical fact is that the first sets of HIV cases was um, it was among okay. the gay community that's basically whether now it is more amongst them compared to the general population i really i really can't say and also drug addict um, addiction is more among hiv individuals that's there's there that's there is a higher risk of hiv among mm -hmm. drug, drug addicts yes compared to the general population Thank you so much, Dr. Adebi, for joining us here at our domain. We've learned a lot. Personally, I've learned a lot about drug abuse. And I know pe parents out there have learned a lot how to go about it, how to, when to seek treatment. And also, you can also get the kit everywhere. It's available. And if you have any questions, you can always contact us. Keep watching our domain. Until next time, bye.